Whatever you do, do not talk to me about the election. I okay? I'm going, I'm going sick with it. If I hear one more person say the electorate has spoken, I will vomit. You know, I mean, the PCs just let it all go. You know what I mean? It's like Ernie Eves. With Ernie, it's like his dad gave him the keys to the family car and the young son crashed it into a wall. I can't believe it. Did you vote? Of course I did. Good. Good, good, good. Did your guys win? No comment. Oh, well. A new era. The revolution is over. Now what happens? I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. I'll have to say, the liberals the Liberals. Okay, it makes me sick. Okay, when are the people of Ontario gonna wake up and realize that we need real change rather than a party that sits on the goddamn fence? Well, what can you say? The electorate is spoken. <sighs> oh, please. And what makes it worse? Sue? Guess who Sue's a folks for? The Liberals. <laughs> I'm on the phone with her last night and we were, you know, joking and talking about things and suddenly she gets silent and, and I say, well, who did you vote for, right? And she says the Liberals, because normally, you know, within her writing, the PCs are in rule, right? So she wanted to change representation. She wanted to do strategic voting. I mean, how wrong is that? I mean, you have to vote for the party you believe in, not the, the lesser of the two evils. No, but at the same time, you don't want to, you want to make sure your vote counts for something. I mean, you can't throw your vote in for a party that has no chance of winning whatsoever. And if you want to affect change in your writing, and you want to get rid of the incumbent, then you got to go for the party that's going to have the best chance of getting rid of them. Okay, who did you vote for? Look, if I wanted to take part in a puppet show, I would have bought a ticket for the famous people players. No, Dana, I did not vote. You didn't vote? I did not vote. Hey, is she still in her room? Is that her screaming? Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get that tranquilizer gun off my buddy Gord, all right? When she goes to the bathroom, which she has to do at some point, I'll ambush her. I'll take some shots at her, eh? Knock her out, and we'll take her. Even if she's passed out, she's going. I do not care. I do not care if she's going. All right, I'm going to call Gord later. I love you. Yep. <laughs> Trouble in the hen house, Johnny? Oh, it's Tammy. It's Tammy. She's freaking out, eh? She wants to go to some uh, high school dance, right? Mm, you know, yeah. some grope fest, some teenage <laughs> grope fest. Right? Yeah. But it's Granny McLaughlin's birthday. You understand? Wow. Could be her last birthday. You understand? And yeah. she doesn't want to go. She's all like, you know, oh, Granny McLaughlin's all boring now. She's all boring. Well, of course she's boring. She's in a coma. That ain't the point. You're going, right? She's freaking out, screaming, screaming, crying. Well, can you blame her? I mean, can well, I blame her? I, I just mean, maybe she doesn't want to go. I mean, it's obligatory family business. Hey. Granny McLaughlin is not obligatory. Do you even know what obligatory means? <laughs> yes, I do. It's all about PR, okay? The liberal government, the federal government, has managed to get out of everything unscathed that this country's gone through. And the Tories, because they don't know how, they don't know how to, like, have a proper publicity campaign, they've screwed up. All the cabinet ministers are gone. They all got bounced. You know? I mean, it's just, look, Schwarzenegger is going to become the guy in California, okay? And he, he admittedly gropes women, you know? 
I'm sorry if I have behaved badly. Yes, it's true that I was rowdy on movie sets. I mean, he stuck his hand up a woman's skirt. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be the governor of California. It's all, I mean, it's only because he's a movie star. <sighs> I mean, just, you know, don't get me started on this one. I could talk for days about this crap. It makes me sick. Yeah. So anyway, one of the Tory uh, volunteers came banging on my door last night, okay? Hauled my mother off to the nearest polling station oh. where she voted for, God knows who. I don't even think she remembers who she voted for. And then she got lost on the way home she, and a cop had to bring her home. See, that's wrong. That, that's wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it's illegal to be campaigning on election day, so, I mean. <laughs> but don't you have like a nurse looking after your mom anyways? A nurse, you mean the male nurse? Yeah, that male I have nurse, yeah. Yes, Gavin was at home, but he was a little, you know, preoccupied. With what? Isn't his preoccupation your mom? Why is no, he taking he was, care of her? No, he was busy, just, you know, <gasps> doing other things. You didn't vote because you were having sex. I did not what? say I was having sex. I didn't vote, and Gavin wasn't there for her because he was busy, and it doesn't matter anyway oh, wow. whether or not I was having sex or doing oh. anything else. I would not have voted, and I'm proud to say I would not have voted. Well, you're proud to say and that you let other people speak for you. Yeah, how well, can you say that? I go along with almost half the population of Ontario, hello, oh, that, that did not right. vote. And one vote, one missed vote, is not going to make a huge difference oh. anyway. Tell that to Martin Luther King Jr. Oh my God. He wasn't How running for political it office, first hey, of all. He people, was a true leader, Yeah, if people not a politician. fought like that during the Civil Rights Movement, then no one, nobody of color would have the right to vote. Well, they had. They okay. needed those rights to vote they back then. The but to now, vote. it's, it's they don't shady. Need, how can who you knows see? if even these votes are reflective of who the true winner is? Oh, you don't know God. that for a fact. You know what? That makes me so angry. I don't mean you know, to make you angry, My parents came from a country that was divided by civil war. All right. Mm -hmm. The communist north came down to the south and wanted to take away our privilege to choose who we wanted to govern ourselves. Right? If they had won, if they had won, we would have lost our right to... We would have lost everything that we are right now. Randy, everything I have. I'm not disrespecting that. I respect it and I appreciate that fact, but I have the right and the privilege not to vote. Oh. Okay. You're spitting in the face of the people who I'm sacrificed. I'm not spitting in anybody's face. I have the right. I can if I want to. I choose not to. All I mean is just because Granny's birthday is important to you, maybe it's not important to her. Obviously it ain't important to her. Well, it's, it, you know, it's like Yom Kippur. What's it's that? like, it's one of the high holidays in the Jewish religion. And my mother, who is not very religious at all, is very adamant that the whole family attends synagogue all day, and we fast, and we pray, and all, and, and the whole deal. It's a very, very somber occasion, very yeah. heavy. And to be perfectly honest, I don't really believe in this stuff, and I got a lot of work to do, you know? And I can't be doing it just because it's important to her. All right, let me lay it out like this for you, all right? I'm 116th Chippewa, all right? I don't know if you guys knew that, right? Now, my people, right, ancient people, right, if they needed to do a rain dance, right, they needed the whole tribe, right? They can't have one little snot-nosed kid going, oh, I don't want to do the rain dance. I don't want to do the rain dance today. I want to go to a dance. I want to go to, like, a high school dance or something like that, right? Everybody would, you know, starve because they wouldn't get no rain. <laughs> right. I, I don't know that that's necessarily yeah. the same thing, really. Yeah. But your knowledge of the Chippewa people is astounding. Yeah. Your average voting Ontarian is an idiot. You and me accept it naturally, but we're not average. The reality is these people don't actually have a deep understanding of issues. They don't actually really have any firm beliefs. They're just bandwagon jumpers. So, you know, don't come crying to me. Wow. Usually I'm not this good at boring women. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, hello. <laughs> I did a pretty uh, heavy doctor's appointment this morning. Oh, uh, sorry to hear that. I don't mean to pry. That's fine. No, that's okay. I had a some tests last week that came back all positive and this morning they told me that there had been a mistake somehow with the computer or something and uh, right. they'd given me the wrong results and the revised test results say that there could be there could be something pretty seriously wrong with my baby.
and it also makes me sick that like, okay, Frank DeYoung, he's the leader of the Green Party. He didn't get the opportunity to, to be a part of the debate when 73% of all Ontarians that were polled say they want him there. They want to hear what he has to say. What is that? It's not a real party though. The Green Party? Forget it. No. Oh, give me a break. No, you have the big three. NDP, Liberal, and PC. I and, mean, the, and they're all doing parties. so well. We need radical change. We need to do something in Ontario to make a true difference because obviously the old guard is not happening. And look who's in the league. The Liberals, okay, okay his commercial okay. is, I'm not going to no, raise no, no, your no, taxes. No, you guys and I'm not going to sound like a either. debate that I was just watching. I'm sorry. I just, I'm sorry. You just, you sound like, uh, 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 kitten eater. Nail jello to the wall. I don't know. It just, just it sounds like you're saying, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I mean, oh, that's what these parties, I'm these sorry, is that you complaining? Anyway. Is that the sound of you no, complaining? No, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, you know, this is like a little microcosm of what happens on the huge political realm. You know, I mean, unfortunately, passion. Shannon, you lose your right to say anything because you didn't vote. I don't you lose my chance. right. I go to work, I pay my taxes, I have a right to speak no, my mind. You know what you are? You're a taker. That's what you are. You're a spoiled, selfish, ungrateful taker. You're the first one to complain, but you're the last one to lift a, a little finger to help do resolve any problem. If you had voting your helped to election. resolve any problem, I would do it. it Resolving does. problems start with you. It starts with me. No, you know it's what? not going to start I'm with. I'm sorry. You, you know better than the, the bystander who watches and lets somebody get mugged on the street because they're too afraid to get involved because they figured they're not going to make a difference. In my opinion, that's that's the way it is. See, this is the passion that I love. Okay, so from sunset on Sunday night to sundown on Monday night, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't brush my teeth, which is disgusting, I can't wear leather, and I can't even have sex. Oh, well, that, that shouldn't be too hard for you, though. <laughs> Zach, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's, I mean, it's all about sacrifice, right? I mean, you, you've got this, you've got this pain body, okay? This, this human vessel that you inhabit, right? And it just wants to eat and sleep and do all these kind of mundane, you know, things. But to, you have to have discipline, to have control over that, you know, through sacrifice. It's beautiful. It's boring. You know what, though? That's the whole point of religion. Mm -hmm. Is boring. All right, it's designed to bore you, right? I, I can't tell you, every single time I see a preacher or I'm sitting in church listening to somebody, I pray, I talk to God, I become one with God. Really? Yeah, I say like, oh God, when will this end? <laughs> Hol I, holy <laughs> Jesus, I could use a beer right about now. <laughs> yeah, I hear oh you. Oh my God, will you just shut up? I just don't know <laughs> what I'm asking forgiveness yeah. for. I mean, I know nobody's perfect, but, but what is starving and praying all day actually doing? You know? You're the master of your vessel. It's as simple as that. You gotta get more opinions. You know, you can't, like, doctors, it's educated guesswork. That's all it is. You know, they don't, not all of them know what they're doing. Tests make, you know, tests go wrong, doctors make mistakes. You gotta see some other people. Yeah, Dr. Nelson's one of the best OBGYN in the city and the province. And I always assume there's a team there anyway, right? Lab technicians and... Yeah, but you know, they got a lot on their plates. And you know, when do you ever go to a surgeon or a doctor and you find out that they're... Like, they always say, oh, that's one of the... You're going to see the best this, you're going to see the best that. They never say, oh, yeah, you're going to see, like, the worst. You're going to see the worst surgeon in Ontario. Yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? So I, I, I just think, try to go get some more opinions. Take any of those tests that you got to take. Take them over again and, and you know... That'll give you a better idea. I guess that the last thing I need to be doing right now is, is not trusting my doctor, you know? she's She's been so great up till now, and if I stop trusting her, I, I don't know who Look, I can trust Look, I know trust surgeons, okay? I know surgeons, I know doctors. The thing <laughs> these guys tell me is they don't really know what's happening inside you until they're there. They got all kinds of technology and machines and knowledge and education, but until they're doing it, they don't know. Huh. Yeah, well, which kind of backs up the decision I need to make, which is whether or not they should go right inside and do an amniocentesis. But there are going to be so many changes that the Liberals are going to be making. I mean, <laughs> look, look at the healthcare system. Oh, yeah, it's, it's totally a believable. mess. Yeah, and they're trying. They're going to try to fix it. Right? They're going to be pumping more money into it that the Tories took out. Yeah, but okay, Randy, yes, if you absolutely. honestly believe that? That's why I voted. Oh, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't have voted like that. You know that's not going to happen. This is what the public this wants to hear. This is from somebody who didn't vote. This You're going to lecture me It's not going to happen. We all know that. This is what the public wants to hear. But They're going to say that to pacify you, what to you vote for them, but it's not going to happen. What are you basing that on? You know who the I would vote government? for? Maybe I'd vote for the uh, Green Party. I'm sure oh, that's something you... 
the because green part. you know holistic. with the, their health care is amazing. It is holistic. Well, it's about both. better care. It's not about just putting a quick fix on things. Oh, fine. It's prevention. That yeah, sounds fantastic. Unfortunately, in theory. The, the Green Party you know will never have a voice because there's no money behind their name. There are no uh, huge corporations, you know, pumping money, no lobbyists pumping money into the Green Green Party or whatnot. No, no, that has it's nothing not to happen. do with it. That has nothing. You know what? How many people didn't vote in Ontario? A if lot. all those people Almost had gone, had. gotten up and voted for the Green Party, right? <clears throat> they would be in power right now. Hmm. I, know. I guess a bunch of votes did make a difference there, Shannon. You know, it makes no sense. I mean, we, we'll give you a new name. You'll be called Complainor oh, from now please. on. Oh, please. What is is that? that like a, a Star Trek character? Exactly. No, it's not a Star Trek character. Not everything is about Star Trek. Star I may Trek, be a geek, Star but Star Trek, Trek isn't a, my life. If they had it's a, a party, party, if they had a political life. party, Star Trek, this would be their leader. I could be captain. Mm -hmm. Be a kick-ass party, too. I hate being forced to do something that I don't even believe in, okay? okay. That's, all I'm, I, that's okay. all I'm saying. Wait a second. Zach, how can you not believe in God? I mean, look around, man. Look around. It's it's a bunch of animals running around in utter chaos, but there's order to it. There's intelligence to it. I'm not in control. Johnny's not in control. You're not in no. control. Who is? Johnny's not. What? Just in control. nothing? Nothing's in control. Oh, okay. Okay. So say there is a god. Why? Why does he care if I if I wear leather or brush my teeth? I mean, wh how meaningful is it if I say a bunch of prayers that I don't even understand? I mean. Why is God so insecure that he needs people to grovel before him? I just don't get it. You know what? He's not, okay? God means nothing from you. Well, All that the traditions are, re religion and tradition in general, is discipline, okay? It's just a constant reminder. Now, you got to become more of a seeker, man. you got to go seek for these things. Because I'll tell you what, contempt prior to investigation will keep man in everlasting ignorance, okay? Don't be ignorant. Well, that's just it. I mean, I make decisions every day, and this one I just... I'm just going back and forth and... and well, what's the big deal? What's the big deal about the test? Well, why, why aren't you going to take it? Well, I guess amniocentesis is smart, right? Because it'll tell me what could potentially be wrong with my baby, but there's a right. risk involved. It's, you know, what? the... What's the risk? I guess the stat is one in 200 can cause miscarriage. The test can. The test can. So. And I think that they're, I mean, they're being responsible and telling me that, but on the other hand, I, I want to know what's wrong. But this, this wasn't in the plan. I, I thought I was over this with this test last week. This, I, I. But this is going to be a definitive test that's going to give you more information than the other ones, right? This is going to be a test that's going to give you a real answer. And really, there's only a 0.5 percent chance of a miscarriage. 0.5 percent, right? Now, I'm not saying. It's not zero, but it's 0.5 percent. If you need to get the answer, and if you need to get it now, that's actually not that bad of a risk. If I could make an investment with 0.5 percent risk, I'd make it any day. I bet, I bet everything I own on 0.5 percent. Ah. I just don't understand. You have to be one of the most passionate, uh, outspoken, uh, strong, like opinionated people I've ever met and I, I it, it, it really bothers me that you just choose to be silent. It's it, it's frustrating. Do you know what I'm I saying? I know it's frustrating, but what is being silent doing? It does nothing. You know, a lot of what we hear, programs and policies and, and crunching numbers and implementing new things, half of it is a bunch of BS. It's never going to come to fruition. It's all business. It's, it's money being transferred basically from one organization to the other just to pacify people. Like, I don't have time. I don't want to be a part of that. I have better things to do with my time. Okay, just because you can't see the change that's happening now, it doesn't mean that it isn't out there. We have to be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah, and if enough people feel the same way as you and have the courage to just sort of step up there and let the world know, let the politicians know, then who knows what we can accomplish. It's just breaks my heart to see people have that decision, make that decision to remain silent out of frustration. Okay, I'm not saying that there's not good reasons for religion, okay? Having faith can help a lot of people, I don't deny that, just not me, okay? So, so what difference does it make in my life if I go or not? Zach. Zach, religion's about the things that are here, not about the things that you can't see. They're about the things that you feel, 
all right? Not about something you're supposed to feel that you don't, all right? So quit stressing about it, all right? Like Tammy doesn't want to go see Granny McLaughlin because Granny McLaughlin's a vegetable now, all right? But the point is, Granny McLaughlin is going to know she's there. She's going to feel it. And the whole family is going to be together, like you, right? Your family wants to be together, okay? They want you there, man. You're part of the team, right? God might not notice if you're at that dinner table or not, but your mom's gonna. Your mom will notice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do the right thing. Eat your Jewish food and be with your mother. Sometimes the dinner table's the temple. I spent the day, I didn't get any work done. I've gone over every, every single scenario of what could be wrong. And I keep coming back to, what if? What if there's something horribly wrong? There's nothing I can do about it now. Of course there's something you can do about it. The question is whether you want to do that thing or not. What if this baby's really sick, okay? What if this baby's retarded or this baby is some kind of illness? Or you could be put in danger by having this baby, okay? Then you have a decision to make. Hey, first of all, I would never abort this baby. And second of all, the test is a huge risk to the baby. We're the same kind of people, okay? You know as well as I do that sometimes it's better to cut your losses. So get the test, figure it out, and then make a choice. This is a baby. It's your life.